Section 7 of Modern Russian Poetry, an Anthology, selected and translated by Babette Deutsch and Avram Yarbolinsky. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Kevin Davidson. Konstantin Balmont, born 1867. Balmont revived the tradition of the wandering minstrel. He traveled more widely than the old-fashioned troubadour, and also more comfortably. His journeys carried him to Mexico and Egypt, to India and the South Seas, and winds from these exotic lands blow through his songs. His stay abroad was somewhat of an exile, as certain political poems written in 1906 barred him from Russia. This was a recrudescence of youthful political ardor, which in his student years sent him to prison for a short time, but which burned itself out early. He returned home in 1913, where he remained through the war and the revolution, till in 1920 he shook the dust of communism from his feet. Of late years his reputation, which was enormous about a decade ago, has been on the wane. Yet his place as a great poet and as a leader of Russian modernism is assured to him in the opinion of his compatriots. He brought to Russian literature a spontaneous lyricism and a didacticism of joy, which, while emancipating poetry from its gloom and social bias, failed of intensity, imagery, and intellection. What impressed his public was his vociferous asceticism and a prolific versatility in subject matter. He has certainly contributed to the language by his rhythmic inventions, his range includes poems about the colors, children's verse, abstruse mythology, adaptations of Russian folk songs and spells, hymns to the elements, and above all, pure lyrics. He is a veritable narcissus of the ink pot, to use a bon mot of Chuchev's. The hymn to fire is given here not for its quality, but solely as a typical example of Balmont's manner. He has done a rare service to Russian letters by translating the poetry of many languages, including the Scandinavian. He has practically made an anthology of English verse, and also gave to Russia a partial Whitman and a complete Shelley. Like Ezra Pound, he takes pleasure in flouting an obscure linguistic erudition. His fecundity, one fears, has survived most of his other faculties. WITH MY FANCY I GRASPED With my fancy I grasped at the vague shadows straying, at the vague shadows straying where the daylight had fled. I ascended a tower, and the stairway was swaying, and the stairway was swaying underneath my light tread. And the higher I climbed, Ever clearer were rounded, ever clearer were rounded, dreaming hilltops aglow, and from heaven to earth twilight voices resounded, twilight voices resounded from above and below. And the higher I rose, strange horizons defining, strange horizons defining, did the summits appear, and my eyes as I looked were caressed by their shining were caressed by their shining, their farewell, sad and clear. Now the night had appeared, earth in darkness lay dreaming, earth in darkness lay dreaming like a slumbering star, while the smoldering sun, his dim embers still gleaming, his dim embers still gleaming, shone for me from afar. I had learned to ensnare the vague shadows far straying, the vague shadows, far straying, where the daylight had fled. Ever higher I rose, and the stairway was swaying, and the stairway was swaying underneath my light tread. Centuries of centuries will pass. Long centuries of centuries will pass, unsighted millenniums, as locusts in deathly clouds descend, and in the muttering of centuries affrighted, the same enduring firmament will watch the end, the dumb dead firmament that God will not remember. Who breathes eternity behind the farther skies, beyond the fading of the last star's last slow ember, 
beyond the utter threshold words may scrutinize forever cold that starry desert clouds out topping is flung forth alien to the end on space when tearing comet fires will crumble with it dropping as dumbly burning tears from a despairing face in the white land the candid psalm of silence rises whitely burning the icy wastes are lit with sunset's radiant yearning. The drowsy elements in yawning vistas freeze, and voiceless are the argent polar liturgies. Above the sea of whiteness crimson curtains falling, no fields or forests here, clear crystal shines appalling. White altars stretch beneath the changeless icy skies, a prayer not suppliant a psalm not voiced arise hymn to fire one o fire who purgeth us in fate kindles strife thy beauty ruleth us shining with life two still and meek in the glow of a taper in church but in riot tumultuous tongued unmoved by wild prayers multi-faced shot with color in walls overthrown mad with passion and nimble and gay so triumphantly beautiful that my eyes are alight with the joy though thou feed on my own o fair fire all my dreams are devoted to thee three eternally changeful thou art protean faced thou art smokily crimson in the bonfire's roar thou art as a flower of terror with petals of flame a bright mane of radiant hair in the tumultuous flame of a taper thou burnst first in blue then in shuddering gold in the silence of midsummer lightnings thou wakest burning coldly in the storm burdened clouds eerily livid and dark in the thunder that crashes the chanting of rain thou art writ in the lightning's brief hieroglyphs in a quick broken flash or long mighty shaft now a ball with nimbus of air all aglow where the swift running gold is with scarlet besprent thou art in the crystal of stars in the comet's strong urge sun sent thou dost enter the chambers of plants with the gift of a quickening warmth thou workest thou wakest the secret of sap flaming up in a scarlet carnation pale gold in the whispering corn or carelessly flung in a lie the drunken vine thou art lying in wait as a spark in the night so thou leapest elate thou art still in thy flight soon thy glow will abate but alive thou art great than thy beauty is nothing more strange or more bright four i shall chant thy high praises forever o sudden o subtle o terrible fire thy work is the melting of metals by thy aid they are fashioned and forged the ponderous horseshoes the resounding and bright bladed scythes that mow and that reap that mow and that reap many circlets for lily-white fingers for ring-bounded lives for ring-fettered years as with lips growing cold the word love we repeat thou createst the tools and machines that shake mountains and shatter and smite the tools that find deep buried gold the keenness of weapons that kill five unto thee omnipresent and sovereign my dreaming i vow i am even as thou thou dost light thou dost burn thou dost strive thou art live thou art alive of old a winged dragon thou wert to the altar didst glide thence to ravish the bride and a fiery guest a consoler who warmed to the bone the young wife left alone O brilliant, O burning, O biting, O fierce, In thy flame all the colors arise, 
thou art crimson and yellow thy gleaming doth pierce with the glow of chameleon gold and the scarlet that lights autumn skies thou art as a diamond with facets that shine as the feline caress of soft eyes that are heady as wine as the wave in its ecstasy breaking an emerald line like the leaf's iridescence agleam with reiterant springs in the dewdrop that trembles and swings like the green dream of fireflies kindled at night like the will-o'-the-wisp in the haze like the dark scalloped clouds the grave evening has gilded with light that have spread forth their mourning upon the dim face of the smouldering days six i remember o oh fire how thy flames once enkindled my flesh among writhing witches caught close in thy flame-woven mesh how tortured for having beheld what is secret we were flung to the fire for the joy of our sabbath but to those who had seen what we saw yea fire was not ah well i remember the buildings ablaze where we burned in the fires we lit and smiled to behold the flames wind about us the fateful among all the faithless and blind to the chanting of prayers the frenzy of flame we sang thy hosannas o oh, strength-giving fire i have pledged love to thee from the pyre seven o oh, fire i know that thy light with an ultimate splendor our being shall drench it shall flare up before eyes that death fain would finally quench with swift knowledge it burns and with joy heaven high at the vastness of vistas unfolding afar who has summoned those visions to being and why who has rayed them in colors befitting a star beyond life is the answer o thou heavenward heart of the element ever in flight on my twilight horizon let death necromancer shed perpetual light end of section seven recording by kevin davidson www.blogordie.com